Welcome to the middle of the week. Welcome to Chatham Heights Baptist Church. I'm Mike Hatfield, the pastor here, and most of you know that or are tuning in, but maybe it's the first time. Who knows? But I'm glad you joined us. This is the middle of week time, and what we do is we have some time of prayer with one another, and we do a small Bible study with each other. I've been going through the Gospel of John for a number of months now, and we're getting close to the end. We go into chapter 18 today to cover that chapter, which is the arrest and the trial of Jesus in John's Gospel. But before we begin anything, let us have prayer together. Loving God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit as we hear from your word this day. Fill us with your truth that we may walk in the ways of God and to the glory of your realm. Amen. Well, we are going to do that, hopefully, in our lives, as walk in the path of Christ uh, in everything that we do. We're going to pick up in the 18th chapter. The 17th chapter, if you recall from last week, we talked about uh, it was the last of the long um, teachings, words of Jesus from the upper room that began in chapter 13. Chapter 17 was referred to is referred to often as the Lord's Prayer because it is a prayer that Jesus offers for his Father or to his Father being glorified, to himself for being strengthened, and to his followers both present and those to come. So, uh, in the backdrop of that, we have now chapter 18, and the scene changes and uh, the place of action takes place elsewhere. When Jesus had spoken these words, now it's looking back at all those chapters, he went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers, and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees went there with ladders and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? Well, they answered, Well, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied to them, I am he. Ego in me the great I am. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them, and when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground, all the officers and everyone. But again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And their answer was Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these other men, meaning his disciples, go. Now this was to fulfill the word which he had spoken of, Those whom thou gavest me I lost no one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and he struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? Jesus is arrested in the garden. The synoptics tell us the name of the garden was Gethsemane. John doesn't mention the name, but it's an inference, I'm sure. And these people who made up this group, some people have said cohort. It, cohort is 600 troops when they're at full strength, so I don't think that, that what came there was that, but I, I think that um, it was a, a pretty good number of Roman troops, as well as the temple police, if you will. So uh, the federal or the occupying troops of Rome, along with the local militia uh, that is attached to the temple and to the priests along the way. And they have come in the dark to arrest the one who declared himself earlier in John as the light of the world. In fact, all the way back to the prologue, we're told that the light came into the darkness so there's a lot at play. It is the understanding of what John began in talking about who Jesus is is now fulfilled again, looking in the darkness of this night and this moment. 
Judas and the co- uh, and the, uh, the the armed soldiers are in the dark. And in John's gospel, that means they don't understand. They don't get it. And it's ironic that Jesus takes the initiative. Who are you looking for? I mean, common sense would say, well, to you play your hand, I'm not going to play my hand. But instead, he says, who are you looking for? And of course, three different times they mention who they're looking for. And Jesus' response is always beginning or including the ego in me, the Greek phrase of Yahweh, the great I am. It, you know, That's what the proper name of God is from, from um, Exodus and Moses. So he tells them, let them go. That's another point that we want to look at as things unfold this week in the arrest and the trial and the next week in the crucifixion. It is an understanding that in John's gospel, even more so than the synoptics, here Jesus is still in charge. He is still telling what will be done. And he tells them, don't bother these Jesus isn't seized in John's gospel by the, uh, the army or by the uh, military. Jesus gives himself up. He is in charge of it. Um, now, Jesus offers, or excuse me, Peter does a Peter-like thing. He wants to defend Jesus, so he pulls out his sword, and he whacks away, and in whacking away, he hits the head of a particular guard by the name of Malchus, a slave who was there as property, but there as, as part of the group. And Jesus you know, rebukes him. In a sense, this is the first act of betrayal by Peter of Jesus. Uh, he portrays Jesus by his actions here, not so much his words. Um, C.H. Dodd once said, Peter would rather die for his master than die with his master. See the difference? Jesus' example of how to handle persecution, to be up front, to praise God in the middle of it, to be able to say firmly, I am who you're looking for. I am this child of God whom you seek. Now for John's church, whom he's writing to, remember we talked about a lot's going on in that church right now and in the in the uh, Mediterranean area of the Roman Empire. Uh, Caesar worship has really expanded and so the church is under a lot of persecution and so many are not quite standing up. But here John reminds them of this story because he wants them to remember, handle things the way Jesus would, with honesty, with the integrity, and with the sense of whatever you do to me is not going to matter because God is in control of all of this. So, um, you know, moving on down to the next segment, right after he is taken... Um, they move him out. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews seize Jesus and they bound him. And first they led him to Annas, who he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who happened to be the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Well, Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did an, another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus. While Peter stood outside at the door, so the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the maid who kept the door and brought Peter in. The maid who kept the door said to Peter, are you not one of this man's disciples? And he said, well, I am not. Now the servants and officials had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. And Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself, stopping for just a moment. Uh, he is taken first to um, Annas. 
Um, Annas was the high priest uh, in Jesus' youth, uh, kind of in that time frame, five, you know, somewhere about 6 to 15 AD. He was deposed by a, a competitor, if you will, high priest by the name of uh, Valerius. Valerius had five sons and a grandson and a son-in-law who would become high priest, Caiaphas being one of those in the middle of that. Jesus, you recall, in the garden said three times, ego in me, you know, confessing I am who I am. I am who you're looking for. Well, Peter here gets the first chance to confess that himself, and his response is, I am not. And the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. So Jesus answered him, I've spoken openly to the world, always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together, and I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand and saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to what's wrong. But I have spoken rightly. So why do you hit me? Why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, who at that time was the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. Remember where? outside the temple by the charcoal fire. Please remember charcoal, because in a few weeks, when we cover the last chapter of John, it's going to be important to remember. Um, Simon Peter standing and warming himself, and they said to Simon Peter, Are you not also one of his disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man who, whose ear Peter had cut off, <laughs> so a little family revenge in there, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Jesus says, Ego in me three times, I am he. When asked three times, Peter's response is, Hook in me. Which means, I am not. I am not. A play on the phrase that Jesus has been telling everyone as a declaration of who he is as God come in flesh. Peter corrupts that phrase, that name, if you will, and says, Huk ami, I am not the person. The betrayal is very great because the words are a play on Jesus' declaration of who he's always been. And you have to declare that this is what you too believe. And up to this point, Peter had said, yeah, that's me. That's exactly me. I'll be with you. I'll die for you, Jesus. But it doesn't pan out that way. In fact, it pans out the opposite. Um, Jesus is asked by Annas all these things, and Jesus kind of deflects a lot. He deflects a lot um, by saying, you know, I, tell me specifically what you're talking about. I have spoken freely and openly. Why didn't he say anything then? There's a lot to be said there. I've always loved when people tell me, a lot of folks say... A lot of folks think. It takes a lot of will for me to not turn and say, name them. Name the lot of folks. Because nine times out of ten, lot means me and two or three others at the most. Out of a lot more people. So, Jesus says, tell me specifically what's wrong. Well, we're going to hit you. you know, well, Jesus says, well, if I... If, I, if I've said something false, you deserve to hit me. But since I haven't, why are you hitting me? Um, I, there's no doubt Jesus could get under someone's skin, I would think. And, and he's doing a marvelous job of that. In verses 28 through 
22. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was early. They themselves now didn't enter the praetorium so that they might not be defiled but might eat the Passover. To go inside the house of a Gentile would have defiled or, or made unclean those priests of the Pharisees who were bringing Jesus to them. So they stand outside. And they uh, you know, won't go in. So Pilate went out to where they were and said, Okay, what accusation you bring against this man? And they answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, well, we wouldn't have handed him over. There's a good non-answer answer. We, we're not going to tell you, We just because we said so. That's all you need to know, because we said so. You know, there's a lot of human drama in here that sounds vaguely familiar. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. In other words, what's it got to do with me? This is a religious thing. Take him where you go. And the Jews said to him, well, it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. Now, this was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Um, there is a test of wills between Pilate and the Jewish authorities. Um, and Jesus calmly stands back as if he's really the one in charge. As they bicker over who is going to judge him. There is a drama that is going to unfold here in the last part of this chapter. Uh, it is a drama that is about the inside out. Hear me on this for a moment. Verses 33 through 38a take place inside the praetorium. That is where Pilate and his people and the Pharisees meet privately with Jesus. The crowd is outside of the praetorium. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do this, you say this by your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Well, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Well, your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Well, Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from the world. And we know that. It's from whom? God. We've seen that throughout the story and at the beginning of John's gospel. Pilate replies to him, So, you are a king. Trying to trap him. And Jesus said, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? This takes place inside the praetorium. The musical has a lot of flaws. Don't get me wrong. Um, but growing up, I was like any young person in the 70s who liked musicals and was a believer, you know, looking for a little bit of uh, reinterpretation or representation of the gospel. And um, Jesus Christ Superstar caught my fancy. Maybe you saw the movie or had the Brown album, the original studio uh, recording, you know, the movie recording. And um, the scenes here between the Pharisees and Jesus, between Pilate and Jesus, do a really good justice to John's gospel. Um, the libretto of that musical does a really good job of giving us this inside uh view of the tit-a-tat. Uh, Pilate doesn't know 
or care who Jesus is. He doesn't. He just wants order and peace. So, he begins to interrogate Jesus. Are you a king? Well, it's you that say I am. I am here to bear witness to the truth. So you're king. Yeah. Well, what is truth? Jesus, or Pilate says, what is truth? In the musical, Pilate goes on to say, what is, uh, about what is truth? Um, we both have truths. Our mind the same as yours. Um, it, Pilate is taking a philosophical approach. He doesn't want to get into the heart of what Jesus has to say. He, he wants to play with it and play with the words. Jesus has just told us in the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, us the readers, Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth. Pilate, you're standing right in front of the living truth of the living God. And you don't see it. You don't get it. What is truth? It's standing in front of you. Standing right there. So... You know, Pilate is, you know, doesn't want to handle that part. So, in the last part of verse 38, after he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them. He went outside the praetorium. He went out to where the masses were, where the crowd had gathered, where there was unrest. And he told them, I find no crime in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man to you for Passover. So will you have me release for you your king of the Jews? And they cried out again, not this man, but give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. That's all John says about it. That's all John says. Now, it's an odd place to stop because we're in the 18th chapter and, and this trial goes on a little longer. But we're going to stop there. You know, It's like the serial movies that some of you may have grown up with. You know, What happens next? We'll wait and see. You know, but um, there's a lot here in the trial and the crucifixion and the burial of Jesus that will happen in the 19th chapter. Um, so come back next week and, and join us with that. Looking down at our um, prayer concerns, some of those that I have, uh, Janice Turner is in the hospital. She had to have a kidney stent removed, but the stones were just too big. They weren't going even through the kidney stent. So they are today, they were today doing a lipotripsy to break them up. And then putting a new stent in uh, and trying to pass those stones for her. So be in prayer for Janice and Carolyn, who's up there with her, I'm sure, and Glenn as well. Randy is in to help Glenn. Um, so remember her. Harless Gardner, who continues uh, recovering from his episodes of a few weeks back. Larry Evans, um, who had COVID, and pray for him recovering from that, and Carolyn, his wife as well. Uh, Gene Summit having tests done. Laura Peters recovering from her surgery. Um, and be much in prayer with all of these, uh, if you would, and, and, and prayer requests that are not spoken as well, but are held tightly in our hearts or in our minds. Let's bow together. Before you, O Lord, the holy truth of the living God, through your Son, Jesus, we come. And we lay before you the truth of our burdens and our worries, of our health and of our concerns. As we lift them to you, take them off of us, 
and then embrace us, strengthen us, that we may continue following and serving you, leaving all of these things into your hands, for ours can do nothing more except point our way and others to you. So in the name of the great I am, ego in me, Jesus, our Christ, and your Son. Amen. Looking forward to Sunday's worship with you. Uh, we're going to be talking about Peter Pan syndrome this Sunday. So I hope that you will join us at 930 to worship together here at Chatham Heights Baptist Church.